hi guys welcome back to my channel hope you guys are doing great i hope you guys are staying safe staying sane and you know just <sighs> i hope you guys are okay basically so um i'm here to talk you know just like a one on one you know just just to air out my feelings and stuff like that so today i've got some food because i was like let me just eat and talk at the same time because for one i'm hungry and two i was just like it can kind of be like a mukbang but you know it's so whatever so today i am eating this it's rice peas bean salad um and chicken so you won't really see the food like but you just know it's here so anyways guys there's a lot ah, there is a hell of a lot to talk about and you know i just found myself thinking that a lot of the things that i was feeling in the past like three weeks have just been have been adding on to each other and just building up and I was just like what the hell like what the actual because like everything just links it really just links and it just boils down to black people it boils down to black people and it makes me sad but at the same time, I'm just like, you can either be sad and let it get to you and, you know, let it make you feel worthless as a black person or, you know, just feel like your existence doesn't matter really. Or you can take it upon yourself to shine, baby, shine, 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 shine. <laughs> so... I was like, okay, let me just say what I need to say first and then and then I'll tell you where I stand right now. So the first thing that I wanted us to talk about, guys. The first thing that I wanted us to talk about is I saw this other video on Insta. I actually saw a lot of videos on Instagram. These the things that I'm gonna talk about basically stem from Instagram. And what I see, obviously, on social media, Twitter, um, Facebook, wherever. And this video was about uh, a guy um, who bought, like, I'm sure people have heard the story by now. A guy who bought, like, I don't know, like, five really expensive cars, um, a black person. And people were just like no where did you get it from i'm not exactly sure who this person is but apparently his name is hamilton or something like that and i was just like okay cool so basically this video was some easy talking about this guy and saying that people were really like wiling about how he has like like he got the money um to buy these cars and People were upset, like, bro, where did the money come from? How were you able to buy those cars? What were you doing to get those cars in the first place? Like, people just literally thought corruption, 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 every way in life. And I was just like, but um, guys, what's wrong? Like, the man has money to buy cars. Why can't he buy those cars? And then Sumizi was like, black people don't appreciate when other black people actually make it in life. Well, we don't know where the person might have gotten their money from, but why does it have to press you that some person, a black person, has money to buy the things that they want to buy? Like, why is it a problem when a black person buys like Louis Vuitton? Why is it a problem when a black person stays in a eight bedroom house? Or, you know, like, why does it press people so much 
that black people can actually afford these things and afford this kind of life. Why does it bother you? And he was saying that as a black person, you definitely should take the time to reevaluate yourself and say, you know what, let's not care about where he got this money from, but rather actually take a look and see that, oh, you know what, he did it for himself if he did and you take inspiration from that don't take it as though it's your problem now because he doesn't care about you i mean guys why 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 is it such a problem you can't even accept the fact that some black person can be rich like sumizia was also saying that you expect a white person to be rich so you definitely won't question where they got their money from Gandhi. they also could have done the same thing but because they're white no one's going to say anything about it and that's a problem. That is a big problem. And that video surfaced like I think two weeks ago. And I was just like, damn. Leading up, you know? Leading up. This leads me to my next video that I saw. And this one was on YouTube. This one was from ZX online. And she was saying that. People in South Africa don't appreciate the craft of South African people, basically in essence. She was mainly talking about the YouTube space and how people like to have like story times, they like to have um, boy drama, girl drama, they like to have uh, what's this? Um, challenges, pranks, like all of these things. And they don't appreciate the fact that someone went out of their time maybe to do uh, a, a course or decided to take the time to show people on, on video what they actually can do. Like makeup crafts. And by craft, I mean like crafting the, of the makeup. Um, you know, like just black people not appreciating the fact that actually black people can do a lot of things. But people just want drama. People just want juicy things. Like... But from America, you'll watch every Tom, Dick, and Harry, whatever they're doing, you stay standing, you subscribe, you comment, you like, you share, you do everything for people abroad. But for South African people, you're just like, nah, this ain't, that's my standard or whatever. And like, people complain that, no, um, these people, like, they're not South African people who, who are appealing to me, or they're not enough South African people who are actually doing something that we like to watch. If you search to Mklambe, you'll know what's popping and how many people are actually doing YouTube. Like how many people are actually taking the time to record a video, to edit a video, to put it out there and heavily market so that actually people can come to them, but people don't want to support. Why is that? Why is that, guys? Like why do we just put so much pressure on our own kind? To do a whole lot when you can't even appreciate the lot that they're doing already. Like, why is it such a problem? Like, it's such a problem. I just don't understand why we can't appreciate our own. Like, I really don't understand why we can't appreciate our own. And, I mean, it's like... It just hurts. Like, black people don't want to see other black people succeed. Truly speaking, they don't want to see other people succeed or do their best in life. They just, I, I don't know what's wrong. I really don't know what's wrong. Which leads me to my next thing. Racism. Ra racism. Like, this is such a touchy topic. I never thought that I'd ever, you know, have to be talking about it. And, you know, like, I don't know if I could call it educating, or bringing awareness, or, like, a topic. It's still a topic. It's still a topic. And as long as people don't change, it'll still be a topic. Which is so tiring. Like, it's so tiring. It's really tiring. And I just think that the past few days' events have really just shown how cruel people are, how ignorant people are. 
so let me just get to the root of why I want to talk about this so like I said black people have just always been so suppressed and feeling like they're not worth it like worth it um, they're not acknowledged for a lot of the things that they do and let me say this video that I saw um, from this other lady called Jane Elliott. I'm sure she, like she's been surfacing all that. I've watched like three videos of hers and not because I was looking for them but because people were sharing them and stuff like that. And she did this other test. I don't know if it's called, I think it's called the eye test or something like that. Where, whether it was like in a group of black and white people or just a group of white people. But obviously she was mainly there to educate white people on racism. And um, what she would do is that she would separate the blue-eyed people and separate the brown-eyed people. So what, she, what, what would happen is that she would give the blue-eyed people colors. Yeah, just like, you know, different, like a colored kind of color just to, so, to show that, okay, they are blue-eyed and they are going to be segregated. And in one of the tests that she did, she did it amongst um, a group of people who were going to the Oprah Winfrey's show one of the days. And what she did was that she she took um, the she separated the brown eyed people and the blue eyed people, blue people, blue eyed people with colors, and she pushed them to the side, the blue eyed people. And then the brown eyed people, she let them go in first, and then she gave them like uh, drinks and, and something to eat and you know just giving them that you know top treatment so to say because what they had brown eyes and then when they got into the studio then they were given like preference as like the best seats and stuff like that and then the blue eyed people came in last they didn't get anything to eat or drink and they just got into the studio so um, then um, one one blue eyed person was like One blue person was like, why are we being treated this way based on the color of our eyes? Why is it that um, we, we didn't get the same treatment as the brown eyed people? We feel like we're not being treated correctly. This is not on. We're not, we're not happy about it because it makes us feel like we're worthless and stuff like that. And then the brown eyed people, another person came and was like, well, you know what? Some of these blue eyed people have been so rude, you know, they couldn't even like accept the fact that we were made to feel better. And they couldn't accept that, you know what, like we, like we're being treated right, like, you know. And the brown eyed people had a mixture of, of black, black people and white people. But this was a, a white person with brown eyes talking. And so the aim of this experiment was to show that you cannot discriminate against a person's skin color most of the time black people or people with brown eyes are made to feel like they're worthless and made to feel like they don't deserve the best in life they're made to feel like they're not meant to achieve a lot they're just meant to be down there and the people with blue eyes or fairer skin you know they get told that they're strong they're beautiful they can do things that they deserve the most that they they're a superior race and these people didn't even realize it until later in the show that you know what she was actually teaching them a lesson to say that it's not fair to judge people based on their skin color anyone can be intelligent anyone can be gorgeous everyone can be gorgeous beautiful handsome whatever the case may be anyone can have the potential to do whatever they want it doesn't depend on their skin color and I was just like, big ups to you, sis. Like, I was just like, you know what? That is such a lesson because people don't understand or why people don't understand the amount of privilege they have just because they were told that they're better than the black race. That's, that's what I have to say. And it brings me to something that Trump said. Video obviously surfaced. I found it on Twitter. And... He was like, what do you guys have to lose? You guys already living in poverty. You guys have really bad educational systems. You guys um, 
you guys basically don't have anything that you could say you know what you're fighting for you like you don't have anything that you're fighting for and i was just like i was so shocked um just like what do you guys have to lose like you need to rely on you guys I, had, oh. mm, 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 mm. I truly felt in my heart like that is just evil pure disregard for the fact that actually we have so much more that we can offer you know another thing happened in my previous high school my previous high school <laughs> my high school the high school that I went to I went to a lot of schools so you don't have to guess which one I went to but just know that I went to and those who know the story they will know and they will relate this is one time like I can't even remember the full story but I just remember that one word and immediately I was triggered guys I was so triggered <sighs> one time I don't know what happened but then a group of black people did something and then in assembly um, they were like well, I think it was the principal was like guys this is not a shabine, you don't have to act that way. And that time I'm paraphrasing, but the word shabine, that we we go to shabines, that that's what she was implying, that we act like we, as if we are in a shabine. And obviously, white people don't go to shabines. So what does that mean? It's black people. She was literally directing it at black people. Did we not, like... And you can't be, you can't say, no, I was talking to the general public in assembly. And you know who, who, what's the race that goes there. That's like the place for black people. White people have, you will term it a different place. Like, we were so mad. We were literally so mad as to like, why did she say that? And not everyone goes to Shabin's Mantla. Like, what's the freak? We were like, still in high school. What would we be doing there? was so pressed like really pressed and I just felt like in high schools obviously also high schools were trending like a lot of high schools um, were trending and people were just like where does racism get normalized and there was just like um, like hands all pointing at private schools and someone was like don't forget model C schools because those are the ones that I went to and I was just like, yes, sis, you're right. Model C schools also like to wipe racism under the rug. When you bring it to their attention, you take it to the HODs, the principal, and like, oh no, we'll deal with it, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, sweetheart, just a splash. Like, don't worry about it. No, we're gonna deal with it, disciplinary hearing. Guarantee to the people who actually, you know, were involved in those kind of things. They just said, you know what, don't do this again. Yeah, pella up. That's where it ended. Nothing happened. But if a black person were to do something, literally suspending, written warning, every... In Tlaco, guys, you couldn't even do your hair and breathe. This other girl showed, um, I don't I think I think she was South African. She said that she was one of, like, like the prefects and stuff like that. And... She would always be telling like white girls like don't dye your hair because it was in school policy that you shouldn't dye your hair or have your hair like a different color to your normal own like it should be natural stuff like that and they would be doing that and you would see that Amutu has platinum blonde like that's not natural like bleach what is it bleach blonde that's not natural and she was like these people are not listening to me and when she would take it up like they wouldn't do anything about it and then she decided, you know what, me being a black queen or whatever, I'm going to take it upon myself to do what? Blonde braids. To make a point. And she went to school and they told her immediately, take it off. Take it off. But, sweetie, your sister's there, opposite dying the hair, left, right, front and center, and you're not doing anything about it. She couldn't come back to school until she took those braids off. Which is something that's so common. I mean, in South Africa, we had, I think her name is Zuleika Patel or something like that. Have her hair out and fighting at Pretoria Girls High, I think. For her to have her own hair out. Why is that even a thing? Like, why is that even a thing for black people not to be able to have hair? I saw another thing on Twitter um, where someone searched professional hairstyles. And what? 
white men came out with their I don't know their cuts or whatever then he's like ah, let me search unprofessional hairstyles I don't know if it's true though but I'm not I wouldn't be surprised if it is what happened black people's hairstyles came out unprofessional I was so touched I'm like really even in schools you can't even you can't breathe you literally cannot breathe because your existence is such a problem and someone like made this point to me and I was like you know what you're right like why does the lives of black people press white people so much what is it that we've done to white people that they feel like yeah what I get if you even get to my level it's a problem you have to be under me your skin color it's not it you're dirty, you're not worth it, you're not intelligent, you're not smart, you don't, you will, you'll not amount to anything, like the words of Donald Trump. Like, what do you have to lose as a black person? Because what? You don't have anything. What, can someone please tell me what is the issue? Why are our lives so pressing to you guys? And it's not just white people, Indian people too, colored people too, the Latinos of South Africa. I don't understand. I, I like. I really don't understand. What's the problem? On Facebook today, I was just scrolling, and then this other person, um, Afrikaans person, I think, um, wrote on his like uh, timeline, and he was like, um, "White South Africans, do you? Uh, I think it was Afrikaans or white Afrikaans South Africans. Excuse me. He was like, "Do you guys regret?" apartheid or something like that and then someone quoted that person was like guys go check the comments I, I went I went scrolled scrolled like there were thousands of comments saying no we don't regret it from white Afrikaners they're like no we don't regret it these people don't appreciate what we did for them we built schools and stuff you can see that they don't Literally, they were like, noit, never, near. Ah, they don't deserve, no. It, life was better back then. Literally, things are just not going right now. It was so much better back. To the point where, the, guys, if you are watching from all over the world, there's a whole entire town, small, that's called Oranya, that only what has white Africans, South Africans, Jani, in a democratic country. Like, it just doesn't make sense. It really doesn't make sense. And really, what did we black people, because I'm pretty sure our ancestors were just chilling in Africa, like, unbothered Huns, unbothered Jens, chilling, and then there's just a flock of other people coming in and acting like they did the best thing for us. Please tell me. Tell me what is so pressing about us black people that you cannot cease to exist in the same vicinity as ours. When we go to white dominated areas, um is holding their bag, people are moving away. Black people get followed in the store. But why? Like, I've seen it so many times in the malls that I've gone to. When I'm busy shopping at the back, I'm busy seeing a security guard following me. Why? Like, why? What? Like, I don't think that I've even done anything at that point in time in the shop to be like, no, actually come after me because I might be trying to steal something or might be trying to do something in the shop. It really, it really bothers me that we still have to talk about this thing today. It really bothers me. Even the Instagram posts, the people were saying, yeah, you know, white people can be posting um, these black squares for Blackout Tuesday and, um, you know, everything that Black Lives Matter and stuff like that. But watch tomorrow when you meet face to face. They won't have any regard for you. And, and like, it hurts. But at the same time, I'm just like... If, it's, if I'm so pre if my life is just really bothering you that much, it means that I'm a threat to you. And it doesn't have to be like that. 
I don't know what a lot of black people have done for people, for white people to feel like I'm just, oh, I'm near, <laughs> near friend. Yiri <laughs> means like, I don't even know how to speak Afrikaans anymore. Like, it, it, it's, it's sad. And just a message in closing to people is that if you are a black South African, you just need to know that your worth isn't determined by the color of your skin. You just need to continue to do you. Shine, sweetie. Be the best person that you can be. Exceed limits that our ancestors have, have reached. Go over. If other races feel like you're being such a threat, continue to do you. Because I know definitely this thing of black excellence, it's there. And don't hate, guys. Don't hate against each other. Why? Like, there's no need for that. All of us, there's space. Like Zozi said, take up space. Because what? There is space. There's no need to be bashing other people. You do you and you succeed in whatever you can. It's over. This is the time and the place for things to change. For real. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video to everyone so that some people can get what? Educated. Other people can get what? Motivated. And we can actually just be a better country and make the world a better place for what? Everyone. Right? Period.